Hello everyone, Tim here. Um, so what we're going to do today, or in this video, is go over this uh, Lua script templates um, extension again. Um, this time we're going to add some different features to it. Um, so what we're going to actually do is we're going to set it up so we can just use a folder. Um, you know, basically place a folder in the auto run folder here that'll be our templates folder and then we'll put a subfolder in there just so we can be set up for um, auto assembler templates later too but this way we can put our Lua templates in here um, and be able to set up separate files to use this um, nothing too complicated you can kind of see um, one of the things we've got going on is we've also got some settings files here. Um, we'll go over all that here in a minute. Um, actually, probably better to just kind of see what those are now. Um, so you can see this was basically the same template we had before. Um, just now it's in its own separate file. And again, this just kind of gives you that so you would have... Uh, syntax highlighting to me it's a little bit easier to edit and find what you're looking for instead of having you know you can kind of imagine if you had 20 of these templates um to me it's easier to find in a you know file format than that you know than if it was all structured in a single table um and that's kind of up to you if you prefer the other method just think it's simpler um you're of course welcome to stick with one of those versions um and then just kind of learn how to read it you know iterate through a folder and find files and that kind of thing um, but so we've got our settings files here and those are real simple we're just returning a single table um, that'll have our settings in there um, and then I did have another one to show that um, you don't have to have a settings file like this one here we don't have a settings file for it um, it will just use the you know the file name um, and then we did go ahead and in this one we're going to go ahead and add a special file um, doesn't have to be in here I might have to double check it again I'm thinking I did it correctly so it doesn't have to be there um, we'll rename it at some point just to test that to make sure that is correct um, but at any rate, it allows you to have a common header that we can declare in any one of these files. I was thinking I'd added it to one. I guess I did not. But this will allow us to have a, you know, a common header that we can use in multiple files if we want to um, and of course you don't necessarily have to use it as a header uh, one catch though is it doesn't really allow you to use the header directly it, it doesn't include that in the list um, if you did want that functionality when we kind of go over how the script works you can kind of change that a little bit to make it work in that way if you would prefer to explicitly include a header um, but essentially right now you'd be able to kind of see down here um, it won't actually load the header up when it's loading templates um, or any of the settings files won't be loaded as a template it will only use those as a settings um, and then we do actually allow one more special file we'll, we'll go over that here in a minute but it'll be a load order um, and it would be real similar to like our settings files except it would just be a list of strings um, and they would be the file names um, so that way if we want to load those up in a specific order instead of it just being uh, I believe it'll be alphabetical with this um, but if we wanted to make sure they were loaded up in a very specific order we can create that load order .lua file and then it will load it up in that order um, instead of just iterating through the file list um, but we'll, we'll kind of go over all that as we go so you can kind of see here um, and sublime text does add some special stuff here so that way we can know what's new what's been changed um, and red would actually be what's been deleted um, 
So you can see here I did have a caption here but deleted it. Um, just to kind of help illustrate what's going on here. So at any rate, we've got um, where we're just getting that separator again. I believe we had actually talked about this at one point before. Um, that all we're doing is getting the first character in this package.config string. Um, and that allows us that allows us to just get a, a proper file separator. Um, not completely necessary, but it is something that way technically we could be cross-platform with this. Um, it, it wouldn't have to only be for Windows. And then here we're just going to set up a couple of variables. Um, we want to have somewhere, you know, where we know we're going to keep our templates. Of course, you can kind of keep that anywhere you wanted, really. Um, but just for kind of a default thing here, and so it doesn't come conflict with my other templates, um, we're going to place that in the auto run folder. Um, so that way, like I said before, it'll just be in the uh, auto run folder templates and then Lua. Um, and then for making some of this stuff a little easier. Again, not completely necessary, but just setting one for the Lua file extension. Um, that way, in case you prefer to use uh, uppercase, you know, you, you could set it up that way. I do believe Windows isn't case sensitive, so I don't think it would actually matter, but, um, but again, this just makes it real easy to change that if it did. Um, and then we've, you know, of course got our loaded templates data that we're going to keep the same because this is still much of this is going to work the same um, but we do have two new functions here we've got exist which basically it just looks to see if a file exists um, so os.rename allows you to rename a file okay so yeah okay so if it does rename it correctly it'll return true and if it doesn't we get back nil and so that's the main reason for this. We can actually see that, yeah, it does rename it there. Um, so here it's renaming it to the same name, um, but that just allows us to way to actually check that a file exists and that it is actually a file. Um, no, I take that back. I believe actually this would work for a directory too. Um, yes, yes it does. Because I do have a function in another module that tests if something is a file and we actually have to open it as a file to do that. Um, so here it just makes sure we're going to get either true or false back no matter what. Um, so it'd be either true and true and thus return true or if nil and true that would ultimately equate to false and so it would just end up returning false here. Um, I believe actually we could just get away with just that part there but uh, to make it more explicit as far as what I'm trying to do, I, I go ahead and leave it like that. Um, but at any rate, this just checks to see if a file exists. Um, or if a path actually exists, I, I guess I should be saying. And then to make life a little simpler, instead of having all of this in a couple different places, um, we create just a simple read file function that will just open a file in a read mode. Um, I'm not sure if we've gone over this yet, so let's go over it a little bit more. Um, so essentially, io.open, um, really io allows you to do it, it's, uh, I believe it's in and out, is what that stands for. Um, and then, so this just allows us to open, you know, um, a file, really. Um, and we tell it we want to open a, you know, file path, we're going to path it or give it the um, mode we want to open it so we could actually do an append mode or a write mode or a read mode. There's also binary read and binary write. Um, here we just want regular text write, so a lowercase r is all we need. Or not for write, but for read is a lowercase r. Write would, in fact, be a lowercase w. Um, and then binary write is B B W, and then BR would be binary read. Um, append, I do believe, is an A. Um, 
you can kind of look this one up to get a little more rundown on how it works but for reading and writing text files um, and not even just text files but files that are of a text format um, just lowercase r for read and lowercase w for write um, and what it will do is it will return two things um, either the file object itself or nil and then an error if something you know like say the file doesn't exist or it's not a file and it's a directory or you know it, you know this will be an error message telling us what the problem was and so all we've got to do here is then we're just going to check to see if you know the file object exists and then we don't have an error because if we do have any kind of error we don't want to try and read the file we just want to end up returning nil and then the error message um, and that way we can kind of check that later and see you know if we need to output an error or if we actually did get a you know if we're going to end up getting a file string back correctly and so here if we do have a file object and no error um, then all we're going to do is read all of the file and that's what this will do um, and no, we are using the semicolon, so we do have to pass the file object to the uh, read function here. Otherwise, we'd have to do io. I believe it would be io dot read, um, and then pass it the file object, and then the the mode. Uh, okay, so yeah, it is io read, um, and then of course there's io write. But then we can either tell we want to read all of the file. Um, you can either read a single line at a time, um, read just a number. I've actually never used this or even seen it used. I assume it just would read a number and return you know an actual number, not a string. Um, and then you can tell it, you know, um, pass it an actual number as the uh, second argument. It doesn't really tell us what the second argument is though. I would assume it's essentially another mode but at any rate um, then it would just read up to that character. Uh, of course with what we're doing we just want to read the whole thing real quick so we just go ahead and say all and get that file string and then we need to make sure we close the file otherwise you will have problems when it comes to trying to read the file a second time because it won't the file will it'll throw an error saying the file is open by another process or by something else essentially um, so we do have to make sure we close that file and then we want to return whatever the file string ends up being and whatever the error ends up being so if we read the file properly it'll be the file string and then nil um, and then you can kind of see here this function doesn't change it stays very much the same um, this one we do change a little bit here um, when we actually load the template up in there that's all the same but the way we're actually generating the script is just a little different instead of that single line um, where it uses that interpret function um, first we're going to actually build our path for the header here so it'd be in that templates folder and then header.lua and then so we check to see if that path exists um, if it does we read the file and then of course if we get the file string and no error we're going to go and run that interpret function on that file string which would be the header file string in this case um, and go ahead and pass it that table so that way it can get access to these variables um, or print an error if we had an error so that way we'll know what happened. Um, and in this case, we almost probably might be better to throw an error here, but I've still got it just printing an error. Um, not a huge deal. It would just be that header won't show up properly if we had an error here. <coughs> and then here we're just setting our our local template variable so we're ready to set it down here later and it'll still have uh, proper scope on down the function um, so then we're going to set a new path here um, and this one's actually going to be using that name that gets passed to it because the idea here is that that'll be the file name and so then we build our string and give it you know the 
whatever file name dot Lua inside the templates folder. Um, check to make sure that path does exist. Um, basically the same thing here. The only difference instead of setting header in that table, um, we're just going to actually go ahead and set that template variable to our interpreted template or our parsed template. Um, and again, print an error if we did have a problem opening the file. And then from there, it's just, you know, same thing as we were doing before. We're just going to check to see if we've got the right function we need to add. If not, we're going to kind of manually add it, essentially. Um, and then again, all these are kind of staying the same. You can see here we're not changing anything here. Um, it's only when we get down to load templates that we actually do change a little bit here. And so here, we're going to create our local file list um, variable. And then we're going to check to see if that load order file exists. So if there is a load order .lua, ooh, and I don't have that extension on there. I could probably go ahead and fix that real quick. Okay, so from there we're going to check to see if inside the templates folder we got load order dot Lua. Um, if it does, then we just want to use do file to read that file and get whatever it would return. And as I said, it would be ultimately we want it to just be a list of strings. Um, and then we'll set that file list to that. If we don't set the file list here, then we're going to go ahead and set the file list using a get file list function that Cheat Engine provides us. Um, and so this will give us a list of all the files inside the templates folder. And then from there, we're just going to iterate through the um, file list using i pairs. Um, so we'll just get an integer for the location in the list or the index, and then a file path. Um, and so from there, what we're doing here is we're going to extract the file name. And this would actually be, so for, say, you know, the um, autoattach.lua, it would be autoattach.lua. So it would include that file extension. Um, so what we want to do is match just the file name. And basically, we're telling it here, um, because period in a Lua pattern, now let's start at the beginning here. Um, so this symbol here, uh, the exponent symbol, tells us that we want this to start at the very beginning of the string. And then we're telling it with these parentheses that we want to actually capture something. And what we want to capture will be in between these. Um, and in this case, and it doesn't, and of course this isn't, these are special characters. It's not like with that uh, percent B. Um, it won't return parentheses or look for parentheses. It just tells it this is what we want to actually capture. And so in this case, we're telling it any character and then more than one is all that plus symbol is doing. And the, like I said, the period is just, you know, it's a wild card essentially. It'll match anything. Um, but what we tell it is we want to match anything up to an actual dot or a period because uh, because period is a special character in the pattern match and we have to escape it with a wild or with the uh, percent um, and a lot of other languages in normal red X reg X you would have to escape it with a backslash but um, Lua makes you use the uh, percent deal so that way we're telling it we want to actually find a, an actual period and then we're telling it again we want to any number of characters but we want to match the least number we can to the end of the string um, and doing it this way allows it to where like for uh, you know auto attach dot settings it will only remove the dot lua it won't remove the uh, dot settings dot lua and if we actually did change this to a plus symbol here it would actually match more it would try and match the largest string it can um, with both of these being plus, I, I'm not real sure which one would win in this case. It may still work just fine, but this way we can kind of explicitly know we want to make the smallest possible match we can. 
up to the end of the string. And again, you know, if you, if you feel like you're getting confused by blue up pattern matching, just know um, I often have to test the crap out of stuff like this just because it is a confusing subject. I don't care if you've got a hundred years of experience. I mean, I've talked to guys that have done this stuff for 20, 30 years, and regex is still kind of a mystery to them, even though they use it regularly. <laughs> so you know, you're not alone if you feel like this is kind of archaic to you or, or you know, all Greek to you. Not No offense to any Greek people. It's just an American expression for some reason, or I think an uh, English-speaking expression. But at any rate... Um, you know, if it's something you don't feel like you understand yet, don't feel too bad. Because um, even I don't, I, I often have to go look it up, just look up Lua pattern matching and start building a pattern until I get something that works. Um, and I just, I have tested this before, so I know it works. <coughs> and so ultimately, it's just going to return, like I said, just that, that file name. So it'd be here, it'd be auto Lua. here it'd be auto settings. Um, timer, timer dot settings, and you know, on down the line, and that'll actually give us our file name. And so here, we're just going to check to see that the file name is in header, load order, and then make sure it doesn't include. If it, you know, we're, we're using match again here to see if we've got a match for dot settings up to the end of the string um, and so that way if this is a dot settings file we'll then know that we don't want to load that like it's a normal template because ultimately I'm wondering if that's actually right I swear it is. I tried opening this and making sure this worked before I started taking you through everything because <laughs> I didn't want to shoot this video 20 times. And why is it getting the test? That's not supposed to. Now I don't think I'm actually checking for the file extension. We just remove it. So yeah, you can't put anything but Lua files in there <laughs> otherwise you'll get an error. Um, not too crazy, I don't think. I think we can kind of deal with that. Oh, yeah, okay. And this works because if it is a settings file, we're not going to do anything here. Duh. <laughs> So then we've got a file name that would be, you know, either just auto attach, timer, um, package loader, or that's actually it because it, it won't take the header, it won't take a dot settings addition to the name um, or load order. Um, so then we actually want to build a proper settings path so we can see if that actually does exist. So that's what we're doing here. Um, we're going to make sure we've got a file name dot settings dot Lua. And then we go ahead and create our settings object here as an empty table first. Um, so that way we don't have problems if, it, if we don't find a file. But ultimately if we find that settings path does exist or that file does exist, then we go ahead and set that settings object to whatever do file will return, which would just be whatever this file returns. So in our case, it'll be a table with caption and shortcut for the auto-attached one. And then that way we can have access to that caption, shortcut, um, and we could add other settings if we wanted to. Um, here we don't really need anything, or you know, this won't really accept anything else. I mean, you could have other stuff in there, but it won't do anything with it. And then from there, it's just kind of the same thing we were doing before, except now instead of using that table, the templates table, um, to get this data, we're just using that settings object. And so we use, you know, settings.caption or the file name, and then we give it the onClick function, which still just passes the name to the generate script function, um, the script object that gets passed to this function and then the sender and then of course we're also giving using that passing that shortcut 
using the settings that shortcut um, and again this would just be nil if you know we didn't have that set and that's kind of it I mean the rest of it's all the same um, so we, we do get a little more complicated here um, but nothing too crazy you know like I said you know you're just kind of iterating through the list that this would return but ultimately that does allow us to go ahead and we'll have those same now oh, and we did kind of discuss that we need to and what we could do is before this function strips the file name we could put another if statement here and check that um, either use match and match the last you know the extension at the end of the string um, or we could just go ahead and use like uh, string sub and just check for the last three characters of a string um, I honestly don't feel like that's too necessary uh, main thing we just got to remember in our templates folder in the Lua one we only want Lua you know Lua files And that does allow us to just start plugging files in there and we don't have to do a whole lot with them as you can see if we want to be able to explicitly set a caption then we'll want that settings file but if we don't care we can just drop a file in there and it will give us that template when we click on that you know on that memory um, item didn't save that so let's make sure it still works after I saved <laughs> and so here we can see with this one oh I'm still using notation for my uh, Templating engine, so let's go ahead and fix that real quick. about that yeah if we don't have something in that table it will ask us for the first one too <laughs> that's funny we could do that again tell it our process is test out of exe and then just because this isn't set up to be the most robust we would have to set it there again um, and again you don't really need to use a header I did set this up so if you weren't using a header then it just won't use that it, it won't matter And whether or not you feel like you need to use a header is entirely up to you. Um, and of course, you could even, what we could do, is we could strip this part out. And strip this part out, and then you could actually have that header work like an, its own separate template. Which may, you know, in case you want to go that route. Um, and I definitely think the shared header is really handy on the um, auto assembler scripts, but here it may, you know, to some extent it could be better to use header as its own separate thing so that way you can 
generate that first and then you know add your package loader if you're using something like that um, and then your auto you know your auto attach function here and just kind of keep tagging on whatever scripts you want as you go or whatever templates you want inside of this um, so that's entirely up to you how you want to set it up This one I'll probably go ahead and leave it like this just because I feel like that edit isn't too crazy. Um, you know, just remember you'll have to remove that full part. Um, FN does not equal header and. And then from the where we actually start working with the template up to our table here. <laughs> And then, of course, you could leave that in and just make it, you know, change that name a little bit, header, you know, Lua header or something, you know. If the name wasn't explicitly just header, you know, it won't match it anyway, so that way you could still have a shared header um, and then have a header template, you know. So exactly how you set that up is entirely up to you. Um, we'll go ahead and leave it this way for now. Um, but that's kind of it for this video, I'm thinking. Um, like I said, just kind of was adding a little more functionality to this. Um, and like I said, that was mostly just to um, offload the template, so that way it's not filling up this file. Um, because, you know, it doesn't really take that long. Let's see if I can find one here real quick yeah so this is an old version that I used to use um, and that's you can kind of see here I've got to have all these separate templates um, and that was a part of the process was to help kind of keep things separated out um, so that way I could include the header on each of these um, and then I had to actually have a proper table to stick all those headers in with my settings and all of that um, and as you can kind of see you know we're already at over a thousand lines and we're just now getting into the functions of the module you know or of the what actually makes this work so not something you know to me it's just it's better to keep this kind of separated out so that way you know this is all we need for the templates to actually be generated, get loaded up and generate, um, and then our templates are completely separated and then we actually get that syntax highlighting and all of that. And of course you could still do this in a, you know, in a slightly different way, have this still a string that's inside the settings file and just load up the settings files. Um, but again, when we're going through this kind of steps anyway to me keeping them completely separate files so I can have that syntax highlighting um, is just you know it, it makes more sense to me so we're gonna go ahead and leave off here um, I think we're gonna go ahead and on the next one we're gonna kinda take this 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 whole file and then start modifying it we'll make a copy and then get it ready so we can start making our um, auto assembler script templates um, and because we've already left off here, we'll probably keep it to where it uses the same file, you know, separate file setup and all that. Um, cause as I said before, what we'll really be doing is the bulk of the work will be, um, a couple extra functions to like generate an AOB and that kind of thing. We'll probably kind of do that in steps similar as we did with this thing. Um, but we'll just be loading up this table here with a lot of different settings so that way we can get have access to that in our template. Um, and that'll be the bulk of what we got to do next for an auto assembler script template generator. Um, and then we'll be removing some of these functions that aren't necessary because they're already provided by the uh, register auto assembler template that Cheat Engine gives us. but at any rate so um so this should give you a template generator
for the um, Lewis script window, the table Lewis script window, and, and allow you to kind of do, you know, not have to repeat code as much, um, stuff that you would just normally have to include inside your uh, Lewis script, um, or the table Lewis script, you can then just kind of quickly add it in there. And then we'll go over actually doing that with the auto assembler um, window so that way we can add and with that one you can you know set up to where you actually add Lua scripts uh, we're using that Lua I think it would be called a pre parser uh, I'm not sure but but at any rate like if you've seen you know if you've ever used it inside of a auto assembler script you know you would use that to tell it that you want to run some Lua code um, but you know we can just add whatever scripts you want to that template um, you know that's kind of the whole idea here is you're not bound by just what cheat engine gives you access to you can you know add your own whole list of templates that you want to be able to use beyond the normal Lua stuff here you know so like I've even got some some of my own stuff I like to use um, that way I can get quick access to stuff I tend to use a lot um, anybody that's used my tables knows I kind of have a thing if it has you know time of day in the game I kind of have a thing for displaying the time um, just so I can always look at my table since I've got multi monitors I can always look at my table and just know what time of day is and that kind of thing and then set time of day and and do all that kind of stuff and this keeps me from having to repeat that but I can still use that Lua code even though this is in the, in the auto assembler but as you can guess this is a script that goes in a different folder than my Lua templates folder because it doesn't show up well, you won't really see it here since I'm disabled mine, but it, it doesn't show up here. Um, this one is separate. But at any rate, so um, yeah, we'll move on to the uh, auto assembler templates um, and kind of go from there. Kind of tagging this on at the um, last second here because I forgot to uh, explain that um, load order file. So, as you can see here, I don't actually, I'm not using that. I believe I am here. Yeah. So we'll just borrow that. And go to our templates folder we created. And then what we can do... So that way, if we want to set this up to load in a very specific order, um, probably ought to do it in a different order so it's not loading it up in the same order so we can actually see it work differently. <laughs> So we can test it. And of course, you know, you can always just have that normally load up. Oh, I deleted that file. That's what the problem is. Or technically moved it more so. That's right, yeah. Normally you would just be dropping your, your file in the um, auto run folder. I, of course, set mine up to run from a central location. Um, and I know I've talked about that before, so I'm not going to go into that too much. something I didn't want to delete. There we go. 
And then we can see here now we're actually following that load order instead of it just being alphabetical. Um, and as you saw earlier, we didn't have to have that in there. Um, but that just gives you another option. Uh, and when I, I will be posting that this file and then I'll probably go ahead and just uh, kind of help keep things real clear. Um, I'll probably post an archive that will be that templates folder we created. Um, so it'll probably be an archive of this folder that'll have, you know, this, you know, it'll have that templates folder, the Lua folder, and then these files all in there. So that way you can kind of already have a, a base setup structure. You know, you want to come in here and change the author name to your name. So that way your, your tables will, you know, you can include the header. Um, and as I said before, I don't think I, I think I kind of mentioned it, but forgot to go over it a little better. Um, but while we have our common header, we can actually make a proper file here and just actually include that um, common header inside here. And then that way we would have access to our, our header. You know, we could both have a common header and then still have access to that explicit header for where we wanted to do it that way. Main reason why something like that would be kind of handy. Oh, not if we got load order. That, that is one thing to mention too. If you've got that load order, you will have to, you know, include all files you want included because it kind of overrides that that auto function. Oh. That only gets loaded once. But then that way you could have that Lua header explicitly added or you could include it in other files. Um, again the main reason for doing something like that is like in my case um, I actually have one that I call my table starter um, and so that does include a header and then that includes a you know a couple of different things instead of having to kind of go through there and add three different templates I can just do this one and it will automatically go through and, and add all this stuff for me so at any rate you saw that we um, can have that load order file um, the main issue with having that load order file is we do have to explicitly add any files that we want included into it, um, so it's it's less automatic. Um, that's entirely up to you. And then of course this does allow um, it still is basic file name, so that way we could actually have our spaces in there for some of this stuff. Um, if you're not wanting to have hotkeys, we can do it that way. Probably should have done that from the start, but I just did not. Those probably would have been empty. I forgot to save the file, I'm betting that's what the issue was. Make sure you save before you try and load it again. <laughs> yeah, so you can see there we you know we can actually have the name set up a little more properly. So at any rate, that'll be the end of this video. Um, just don't forget if you are using the load order. Uh, to go ahead and add all files you want to add um, and then you could even make this one just say header by using a settings file and that kind of thing but uh, we'll just kind of leave it here um, and just know yeah whatever the file name is does have to match with that head so if we wanted the header file would have to be lua space header dot lua or dot settings dot lua for a settings file for this um, but to me, that's more for adding that shortcut, really. Um, but again, if you prefer not to have spaces in your file names, but still wanted to have spaces in the uh, names that the template 
menu item show, you know, you can do it with the settings file too. So we've kind of seen we can kind of do it multiple ways there. So this will be the end of this video. Um, we'll see you on the next one.